The meeting is live, sir. Thank you. Welcome to our Williamsport City Council meeting. It's Thursday, December 10th, 2020, and we're meeting remotely uh, as we have been. Um, we have uh, a few items on the agenda tonight. Two of them are budget related and a couple others. Uh, so we're going to start with item one, approval of city council minutes, dated 11-30-2020. Is there a motion? So move. Second. Second. Motion and a second. Uh, any questions or revisions from council members? Hearing seeing none, Mrs. Franklin, the motion, please. Randy, before I take the vote, did I sent out um, the second budget too. Did everyone get that? I put that on the agenda? Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mr. Yoder? Yes. Mr. Mackey? Yes. Mr. Polizzi? Yes. Mrs. Katz? Yes. Mr. Banks? Yes. Ms. Mealy? Yes. Mr. Allison. Yes. Motion passes seven. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Frank. Item two, limited courtesy of the floor. We have no requests tonight. Um, before we get to the next item, uh, we're going to go down to item five and do item five and item six. Uh, I just want to announce that we're going to have an executive session immediately following the adjournment of our regular session for uh, a legal issue. We move down to item five, uh, a resolution about paper reduction. Would you read that in short form, please, Mrs. Frank? Resolution for the City of Williamsport paper, redu paper reduction policy. Thank you, Mrs. Frank. Is there a motion and a second from council? So moved. Second. A motion and a second. Um, Mr. Banks, welcome tonight. Good to be here. Fellow so, council man. Uh, so this came up during our last meeting um, that the city could have a somewhat substantial budget savings by reducing our paper costs. I think actually Councilman Yoder brought it up in, in our supplies items for each department. There's a substantial savings to be had. So we threw this together and um, I did actually have an amendment to it. Um, we wanted to discuss it, but I actually had changed the now therefore statement um, to be a deadline to have a paperless plan. Um, by the beginning of the third quarter of the year, um, instead of having a certain reduction by that time. Um, so I would like to amend it uh, as we have it. Um, um, yes, to read. Are you, um, make, are you making a motion to amend then? I, I would like to make a motion to amend, yes. Is there a second to that? I'll second that. Second. Okay, so it would then read, uh, oh, now right. therefore be it resolved by the city of the council, by the council of the city of Williamsport that all city departments shall have, or shall submit a paperless plan by October 1st, 2021 to be enacted on January 1st, 2022, and shall be entirely paperless on January 1st, 2022, except where paper hard copies are required by law. That, that may be a little wordy. <laughs> Um, discussion council on that amendment. Yeah, Randy, um, uh, Councilman Banks, I'll just say I completely agree with that. That was one of the two big, I guess, just observations that I had. I thought that might be a better strategy. So 100% agreed. And uh, I absolutely support that amendment. Other comments? We're just commenting on the amendment or this in general? We're, we're commenting on, on the amendment. Yeah, I, I agree with Mr. Yoder. Um, and thank you, Mr. Banks, for uh, for foreseeing that um, change. Um, did you get everything in the amendment, Mrs. Frank? Pretty much, but I can also listen back. OK. Um, any other questions on that amendment from any council members? Okay, Mrs. Frank on the amendment, please. Mr. Yoder. Yes. Mr. Mackey. Yes. 
Mr. Pelosi. Yes. Mrs. Cat. Yes. Mr. Banks. Yes. Ms. Mealy. Yes. Mr. Allison. Yes. Motion to amend passes 7 0. Thank you, Mrs. Frank. So now we're back to the uh, the original resolution, the body of it. Um, do you have anything more to say about it, Mr. Frank? I don't. I just want to thank Mr. Yoda for bringing it up because it's, it's, uh, we're going into the year 2021. We should be paperless by now. <laughs> so it's, um, it was a, a good observation. I'm glad we could take some action on it. Yeah. I think Mr. Yoda. I'll just thank Councilman Banks for taking the initiative to put this together and uh, just say a job well done. Other comments or questions from council members? Um, uh, Mr. Allison, I would just say that, I, I, yeah, uh, once again, thanks, uh, thanks, Dave, thanks for taking the initiative on this one. Um, I remember last year, I think I waited into it and basically asked Mr. Pavlock to cut a bunch of money out of each department's paper budget because it seemed ridiculous to me that we should need that much paper in the city. Um, but that was a backdoor and uh, I believe entirely ineffective way to accomplish um, <laughs> the goal that Mr. Banks um, will, will hopefully manage to accomplish with this resolution, which is we, the, the, the city should, should no longer be utilizing paper as our primary method for communicating and or recording items. Um, the digital age has been upon us, uh, I think pretty much since I was in college <laughs> and, uh, and, and it's time that we caught up with it. So um, thanks a lot, Dave and Adam for, uh, for, for for getting this to the, the forefront of our minds. Mr. Allison, this is Nick Grimes. Do you mind if I have Absolutely. a little bit? Of input no, here? yes, please. Okay, and, I, and I'd like to see if some of the other staff agree. Um, I, I think that this is a wonderful idea and it, it should go through, but I'm worried if we are taking money out of the IT budget that it's not realistic to get there. Um, and, and what I mean by that is for us to be paperless, we need to have fillable PDFs online, which even with a full-time IT person with a thousand other jobs to do, I don't know that they have the time to dedicate to that. We need more devices at home for department heads and staff. You know, I don't have a, a laptop or a phone from the city. So when I go out to meet with, with businesses and taxpayers, I, I can't take an electronic copy with me. You know, we need to have online cloud storage that we can access from anywhere. Otherwise, you know, we need to have paper copies. So without, without a, comprehensive plan with IT to have, you know, Office 365 and devices for employees or having a Google suite or something like that. I, I don't think it's, it's realistic, you know, unless we put more resources into it, which I think would be a good investment. And I think this is a way to go to be more efficient and save money and, you know, be better for the environment. But I don't think we can cut IT's budget, you know, in, in the next ordinance that we're going to be hearing. And at the same time, right before that, say we're going to agree to be paperless and 12, 15 months. Quite well taken, Mr. Grant. Mr. Yoder, did you have your hand up? Oh, Mr. Banks. Um, I just had, I had an amendment to the budget that I was going to propose later that was um, Mr. Cooley uh, takes the healthcare buyout. So um, there was some money, I think Joe Pavlock will be able to give us the exact number uh, that we could move into the equipment light item for uh, for IT to try to get that moving. It depends if, you know, if Mr. Cooley has an estimate on what that might cost to get us up to speed on paperless in 2022, um, if that, that amount would cover it. But I think it was around $18,000, but uh, Joe Pavlock would have to give us the actual number on it. So mm -hmm. I, Chris, are you there? I am here. Um, I don't have an exact figure off the top of my head, but that uh, 18,000 certainly would, would um, be helpful to get us to that point. Um, and we really need to, yeah, then look at um, what department heads have laptops versus which ones don't and um, and sort of go from there. But if we can put some money that we allocate specifically for that and we can work towards that that number achieving achieving the goal. Okay. 
Uh, can I can I also make a suggestion on that? Yes, please do. Um, we are uh, in exceptional times in a number of ways this year, um, which we've been discussing ad nauseum um, over the last few budget 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 sessions and council meetings. Um, but one of the things about these exceptional times is that interest rates are exceptionally low. Um, and now might be the time for us to look at the uh, digital infrastructure needs that we have, so to speak, um, as, as Mr. Grimes has pointed out, things like laptops and or um, cell phones that, that would make it possible for us to go paperless. And if possibly the best way for us to finance that might not be directly out of the general fund, but by a borrowing because interest rates are so low and the savings that we would recognize would more than pay for the debt service on something like that moving forward. Um, the only reason I suggest that is that gives us the flexibility to look at that early in 2021 um, as a possibility for, for borrowing. I think that's a very good point, Councilwoman Mealy. Um, I think, Mr. Pavlak, yes. I just want to um, expand on what Mr. Grimes had uh, talked about earlier. I there's going to be a big investment, I think, uh, in certain departments to get something that uh, will enable the, the paperless capabilities. Uh, for instance, the finance department, um, we're, we're still running paper checks and there's the opportunity to go um, to electronic payments, things of that nature. But um, we have to have the software um, along with the, uh, the, the equipment to be able to do so. Um, in the HR uh, realm, and I don't know if Joellen was going to chime in on this, uh, but you know we're now in open enrollment for benefits. Um, so if we can create a, an online package where employees could um, log into a portal uh, to do various things, um, there, there are definitely opportunities out there, but I think that there's going to be an upfront cost. So um, I, I think that ties in a little bit to, to Ms. Mealy's um, comments about potentially borrowing or searching for other, other sources, but we'll need to, to come up with a solution to um, put those programs in place to be able to, to meet this need. And I don't know what the timeline it'll take to do that. So um, just some thoughts. I, I guess um, another thought I had was uh, in, uh, what comes to mind is a year sounds like a long time, but it's not. The year got, goes by pretty quickly. So I think I'd be interested in knowing what our plan is for the planning. Um, how are we going to attack that? Uh, who's going to be involved? What that's going to look like? I think we have to be intentional about that part or um, we might be uh, not not have a cohesive cohesive effort uh, or concentrated effort to uh, to get to the place that we need to get. So um, I think that's a, a discussion we'll need to have early uh, in 2021 uh, with the administration to see how we can all work together and who should be on. Uh, we're probably going to need some kind of teamwork a team or a group um, to oversee that effort since it, it's more than one person can handle, obviously. Um, any other comments? Mr. Allison, if we're putting together a committee of that nature, um, might I suggest, or, or some sort of group to oversee it. I think we've perhaps already pretty clearly delineated the actors in that. Um, Mr. Yoder, Mr. Banks, Mr. Grimes, Mr. Cooley, and possibly Mr. Pavlock all seem like they have a lot of knowledge about it. So anyway, um, that was all. Thank you. Okay. That sounds good. That's a good first step. We can uh, work on that early next year then. Any other discussion on this particular item? Okay, Mrs. Frank on the resolution, please. Mr. Yoder. Yes. 
Mr. Mackey. Yes. Mr. Pelizzi. Yes. Mrs. Katz. I'm sorry, yes. Mr. Banks. Yes. Ms. Mealy. Liz. Yeah, sorry, Dennis, yes. Mr. Allison. Yes. Motion passes 7 -0. Thank you, Ms. Mrs. Frank, and thank you, Mr. Banks, and everyone else who joined in that uh, discussion. We'll move to item six, a uh, resolution on uh, from the fire and emergency medical services uh, on an emergency medic medical services grant. Is that in short form, please, Mrs. Frank? Resolution for COVID-19 Crisis Fire Company and Emergency Medical Services Grant Agreement. Thank you, Mrs. Frank. Is there a motion and a second from council? So move. Second. There's a motion and a second. Welcome, Chief Killian. Good evening, Mr. Allison and uh, City Council. So uh, before you uh, currently is a resolution to accept a grant award from the um, Office of the State Fire Commissioner for an amount of $25,342 um, for COVID relief. Um, this grant has been awarded. We, uh, Mayor and I have signed off. We're just uh, awaiting council's acceptance. Uh, needs to be accepted and filed prior to December 31st of the year. And the money is allocated for... Um, uh, fire department, personal protective equipment. And I'll be happy to entertain any questions that you have on the uh, on the resolution. Thank you, Chief Killian. Any questions or comments from council? I think we're all very happy to, to, to get a grant of any amount and it's gonna be put to such good use. Um, hearing and seeing none, Mrs. Frank, and thank you for the, the initiative to, to go out and get this. I know um, the police department also is interested in, uh, in getting similar type grants. So we hope we'll be successful on that too. Um, Mrs. Frank on the motion, please. Mr. Yoder. Yes. Mr. Mackey. Yes. Mr. Pelizzi. Yes. Mrs. Katz. Yes. Mr. Banks. Yes. Ms. Mealy. Yes. Mr. Allison. Yes. Motion passes 7-0. Thank you, Mrs. Frank. We will move up, back up to item three, which is our ordinance adopting various operating budget funds for the city of Williamsport. Um, this is the uh, second reading and could be the final reading, um, but uh, is there a motion on this? Ordinance? So moved. Second. There's a motion and a second by council. Okay, we're back. We have the budget open back up. So uh, we've had a week, and I know everybody's been working hard. Uh, is there anybody that would like to get the discussion going this evening? Mr. Banks. Since we were just talking about moving that $18,000, um, I'd like to make a motion to amend uh, line item on, you know, on page 39, line item 23505290, remove $18,000 from that line. Uh, uh, Randy, do I need to make two motions to move it into another line? I think you, that's all. <clears throat> yes, I believe so, right, Mr. Pavlov? Yes, you should You should be doing two separate motions because yes. one is a decrease yes, and one is an increase. Yes. Understood. Um, what was the, the number again, Mr. Bank? Uh, 2350. 52090 is the health insurance. Okay. And Joe, is that the correct number? 
that's the health insurance account, correct? My question would be, um, not knowing the direction, if we're going to hire someone, uh, that would only leave ten thousand um, dollars in that account for any um, direct hire. So I, I don't know the direction. So I just want to make sure that everyone's clear that um, that could potentially underfund the insurance, depending on. Um, well, does, that number, does eighteen thousand directly correspond to? Mr. Cooley's. Um, no, no, his. Um, you'll see in the the 2020 budget, um, it was around 9,700 for 2020, uh, and I think there was a four percent or so increase in healthcare, so um, maybe around 10,000. Okay. If, if you're looking at it from the 2020 standpoint, but we're that, we're not showing that in the estimate, so. Why has it is increased so substantially? We're because looking to hire somebody. I don't know that. That's my that was my understanding that we were looking to hire someone. So that would be the coverage for um, family coverage. Mayor Slaughter, could you give us a little guidance there? If that would you think that would be enough to hire someone in the IT department? Well, no, uh, to leave ten thousand in there. As far as the future occupant in that. Oh yeah, I think uh, Chris Cooley is probably going to be going back. We've had discussions given the paperless discussion we just had um, and you know some of the things we wanna see in 2021 and some of the current situations that we're having um, that we may, Chris may be best suited if he just uh, goes back and, and does full-time IT. Okay, so in that case, we should be able to take the 18,000 out and leave it. In that case, yeah, I, <clears throat> that sounds like an appropriate number. Okay. Mr. Yoder. Um, quick question. If this was asked a couple weeks ago, um, I missed it. Uh, what's the equipment line item um, 2350 under uh, the IT budget? Joe, Chris. Um, that is the point to point link between fire headquarters and city hall to upgrade that it's adding cameras to city or I'm sorry to fire headquarters. Um, there's $10,000 in there to buy office monitors and all the other parts that go to the computers that need to be deployed throughout city hall for the uh, departments that never budget money. Um, and then there's some money in there for potential network hardware that may be required when we um, bid out the fiber connection for the city and, and fire headquarters. Okay. Um, and then what's the line item below that software? Remind me. Um, that's the our spam filtering software, annual maintenance, and the upgrade for VMware, which is the OS that the servers are running. Okay. Um, the only thought was, I mean, there's there's some important things in there that I think are pretty fundamental to day to day. But um, if we are looking at, or if we are putting together a plan to go digital. Um, it does seem like some of that could potentially be pulled from there as well. Um, I would think the plan would affect all of that anyway. So um, if we are concerned about the strategy of the IT department, whether it's Mr. Cooley, a different hire, or we have had previous talks about um, that being a department where we contract out, that might be an option for us um, if we are concerned about the health insurance thing. Just an observation for everybody. Um, did we get a motion in a second on Mr. Banks? Yes. Or Mr. Ba Banks made the motion. Did we have a second? Yes, we did. Okay. Other discussion from council? Just one thing here for Chris. Um, if we do move this 
and we're looking to, you know, change our PDF readers to go digital, things like that. Would we be best to, would it be best to put it into software instead of equipment? Um, that, or if Joe wants to create an account specifically for um, the paperless project, that would be fine as well. I think um, my recommendation, because we have the account there, let's, let's put it in the equipment with the, um, I mean, it's on the record here that that's what that is intended to be used for. And when we come up with the plan uh, in October, um, if necessary, we can move the money into uh, more suited line items, if that's what council desires. Thank you. Okay, uh, Mrs. Franklin, the motion to reduce that line item budget. Mr. Yoder. Yes. Mr. Mackey. Yes. Mr. Pelosi. Yes. Mrs. Cat. Yes. Mr. Banks. Yes. Ms. Mealy. Yes. Mr. Allison. Yes. Motion passes 7 0. And your second one, uh, Mr. Banks. Yes. So I'll make a motion to um, amend uh, line item. Two three five zero six four zero one zero to add eighteen thousand dollars. Is there a second? Second. There's a motion and second. Uh, discussion. Mr. Bank. Just one thing here. I want to thank Mr. Cooley for bringing this to my attention that we could cut this and and add it elsewhere. So thank you, Mr. Cooley. Thank you, sir. Uh, other discussion from council? Hearing none on that motion, Mrs. Frank. Mr. Yoda. Yes. Mr. Mackey. Yes. Mr. Pelosi. Yes. Mrs. Cat. Yes. Mr. Bank. Yes. Ms. Mealy. Yes. Mr. Alice. Yes. Motion passes 7 0. Thank you, Mrs. Frank. Um, other, any other motions? Mr. Banks. I'll keep rolling here, Mr. Allison. I'm on page 25. Um, I'd like to amend line 2240-64010, that is the Parks Department equipment line, and reduce that from 60,000 to zero. Is there a second? Second. There's a motion and a second. Um, any discussion from council? Mr. Yoder. Yeah, just a quick question. Um, what what specific qu equipment is that? Just as a reminder. This is the new tractor. Uh, Mr. Winder was generous enough to put it forward for us. Uh, they said that the old tractor can make it another year. So, Perfect. Thank you, Mr. Winder. Any other discussion? Hearing none, Mrs. Frank on that motion, please. Mr. Yoder. Yes. Mr. Mackey. Yes. Mr. Pelosi. Yes. Mrs. Cat. Yes. Mr. Banks. Yes. Ms. Mealy. Yes. Mr. Alice. Yes. Thank you, Mrs. Frank. Motion passes 7 0. Um, are you still on roll, Mr. Banks? Or <laughs> if Mr. Banks doesn't have one, I've got one since we're on this page. I think he's he's got he raised his hand. Please go ahead. Okay, okay. Mr. Yarder. Um, yeah. So since we're on page twenty-five, um, a question on line item two two four zero seven six zero five two Bowman Field improvements. Joe, how much money do we have in the Bowman Field account? Uh, 
uh, around 150, 160 right now, which is committed towards the uh, RACB project. Okay. So the money in the account's already committed and scheduled to be used, right? Correct. And I, it, Go ahead. Um, and then this money is part of the 210 that's in the capital budget. This is the final year for that. Being that the project will is expected to um, conclude this year. Okay, um, that kind of shoots down my idea. So never mind. <laughs> I, I didn't know if there. I not knowing the amount of money that is in the Bowman Field account. Um, I didn't know if that this is a. It, it seems like this would be a year if we had a good surplus in there that we tap into that for this. Right, um, you'll see. You'll see on page fifty-five that there's one fifty coming in from there. Gotcha. 160 the remaining stays for utilities so never mind um i mean it would be fantastic if we could try to you know with with the mlb um draft league announced you know i don't know if there's a way where we can capitalize on that and maybe try to raise externally some of that money to offset that a little bit um just it's just a thought that seems like something we may be able to adjust um, even if it's half, even if we are able to reduce it by 35,000 and try to put a focus on raising some money this spring, um, that would, that would help. So I don't know what everybody else from council thinks, but it's certainly an idea. Uh, if I can jump in, Mr. Yoder, um, that was actually, uh, going to be my proposal this evening as well, that we assume, um, by naming rights that we would see some amount of money and consequently cut this line um, in the expectation that, that we would be able to recognize income that could be dedicated toward this later in the year. Um, but uh, um, this is, uh, I feel strange saying this because I am generally speaking um, a very debt allergic person. I don't like to take on debt. I don't like to see the city take on debt. I don't like to see my friends take on debt. It just does not seem to me to be a wise um, course of action by and large. Um, but in this case, and especially given the likelihood that we will realize um, perhaps a greater return on the minimum rights this year than we have in past years, um, I was going to make a suggestion that the administration look to um, reduce look to reduce or eliminate this line item as well as our obligations in terms of um, infrastructure work on the pool this year um, and uh, take out a small borrowing item that would address um, Bowman, what our remaining, our remaining needs at Bowman Field, um, any repair needs for uh, the pool at Memorial Park. And then as we've just discussed, perhaps also um, any digital needs we might have related to going paperless. Um, with the exception of the pool, these are, those are both items that I think we could look to offset um, any interest we might pay, which we know would be exceptionally minimal in, this, um, in the current economic climate um, with income from either naming rights or from no longer spending on paper in the city. Uh, so I, I think um, I, I, I was I was going to discuss that perhaps a little later in the meeting, but but I think that my suggestion would be I, I would be um, comfortable with the move to cut all the funding if you would like out of this, um, but uh, with an eye toward looking at borrowing as the wisest uh, as the wisest option for this, um, given the given the impact on the general fund this year. Um, I, but please let me know your thoughts. Um, I personally share a lot of those sentiments with you, um, Liz. Um, I think in this circumstance, that's a strategy that I think I could get on board with given the current um, interest rate environment, um, everything we're seeing there. So um, I could get on board with that. Um, and I, I, so I suppose I would make a motion to um, uh, change line item 22407605050 Bowen Field Improvements from 70,000 to zero. I'll second that. Okay, there's a motion and a second. Um, <clears throat> is there more discussion um, from anybody? 
I have a, I have a question. This is John Sander. Uh, Joe Pollock, will this affect the uh, imminent Bowman Field scoreboard bidding in a month from now? Um, it's removing the funding, so we'll have to have another funding source in place, um, and then we'll so, also have to consider whatever debt service. So we're letting the so I'm letting the project one month actually awarding the excuse me awarding the project essentially a month from now, and I'm going to lose seventy grand. So now I'm down to five hundred. So I was at five seventy. Okay, that's an issue for me. Okay. Mr. Slaughter, um, did we want to, with that in mind, um, because we don't want to uh, fumble this project a third time, so to speak, do we want to sooner rather than later start to look at possible funding and, and uh, how much we want that to be? I mean, with the, the Bowman Field project is moving along pretty well with the scoreboard. I don't want I don't want any hiccups, and I definitely don't want to have to call Senator Yall and say uh, we we uh, we have another roadblock. So I just want I guess I'm just asking for some direction on that front, as far as we're 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 pretty close, and we're we have a somewhat of a tight timeline uh, working with everyone to make sure that scoreboard gets up here in the spring. Uh, so I just want to make sure we, I guess I'm asking council for direction on what, where do you want me to look for funding? What do you want me, you know, what's the, what's the goal here? So um, quick, John, can you yeah. um, reiterate the date that you're sure. looking for? What is it again? Sure. Hold on. Today's the 10th. Uh, we are looking to have it advertised in next week two weeks and have it advertised through january 12th and then have it uh select the winning contractor by january 15th and have them start as soon as humanly possible at thereafter so as to get the scoreboard up by a date of april 15th for the cross cutters so um i, I would suspect we're not going to have any clarity on naming rights um within a month Joe, how difficult would it be to um, have clarity, at least, if not be substantially through the process of securing um, bond funding um, for what uh, Councilwoman Mealy had, um, had mentioned over the next month? Uh, I think that that could be uh, tricky as well. Um, I don't think that it'd be a bond in this case. I think we'd do a note, uh, but um, I, I, I don't know with the holidays that 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 would be I, i'm not sure okay um so i would be yeah i, I don't know I, I would be willing to i have a number of i think that we all have a number of questions that are probably going to come out of the discussion tonight i would be willing to ask council to vote no to this um with the expectation that we probably table this um, entire budget after discussion until next week. Um, and I would ask the administration to start that process to um, figure out how feasible it will be to secure some kind of funding so we could eliminate that light item by next Thursday. And do we have a, an amount that your council is considering? Uh, I mean, I, you don't tell right now, I guess. I just understood. Yeah, un understood. Uh, understood. Um, yeah. Is this a borrowing amount, Derek, that you're asking, or a? Well, Joe Pavlock said he'd probably look at a note, but if we want to, you know, as you were saying, if we want to do some IT things in the, the, the Bowman Field, the scoreboard, kind of just have an idea of kind of what all we want to tie into this and what what that note kind of would be. Well, I think I think that's the information that we're looking for from you by next week. Yeah. Um, that, that is to say, I, I don't know precisely what we'd feel comfortable with spending on IT um, or what, what, what the IT director will have the sense that we, that we might need for funding there, um, mm -hmm. as well as whether we want to offset just the 70,000 in this year, this, this year for Bowman or whether we want to go ahead and look at the entire 210,000 we set aside over the past three years. Obviously, that's partially going to depend on interest rates and what's out there, um, exactly what our debt service winds up being right now. 
Um, and then, uh, you know, and then once again, what, depending on the interest rate we can get and what the debt service impact would be for us, are there other things that we would, that we would like to fold in? Other things that we could get taken care of now rather than postponing them if, if interest rates are kind to us. Yeah, so I can get, um, yeah, so get with, sorry, go ahead. Uh, yeah, but so I think that that is the question that we need to answer by next week. Obviously, we can we can we can finesse things substantially over the next month or so. But what we need to know by next week is is uh, you know a, a baseline minimum that we would be looking to borrow, um, more or less what our what our debt service cost would like to be if we finance it out over the next ten years or or fifteen, um, whatever the recommendation might be, and uh, and then. Um, you know, just make sure that fits within our vision, I suppose. Uh, I think I too am inclined to table the budget this week and make final decisions on it next week because we need to get it lower than we can do tonight. Um, but but that to me is, is what the administration needs to come back with next week. Okay. I yep, we can right. look at that. I think, is there, uh, okay, yeah, no, I'm just thinking out loud. I'll get with Chris then. We'll look at IT kind of comprehensively. Um, along with the Bowman Field, the school board project, and uh, try and get some uh, detail put around of what we might be a minimum borrowing for that. Mr. Mackey. Yes, sorry, just while we're on this subject, uh, I, I would think we would wanna try and um, throw in the, the repairs to the swimming pool to that number as well. Um, and correct me again, just to just to the issue of the the seventy thousand for the scoreboard, and you know I'm new, so correct me if I'm wrong. But much like any job, you don't pay for that job up front. Is that correct? I mean, we technically don't have to pay off the scoreboard until it's done. Correct. So I mean, if we're looking at having this job being completed in April, right? I mean, and, and correct me if I'm wrong. Well, typically, this is Joe Girardi. Typically, I don't know how it works, but usually you pay so much up front, so much through the uh, uh, construction, then then you do a final thing, and then you pay it the final fee at the end. That's how I typically understand how it works. I'd expect yeah, you're, it to be you're, you're right. You're right, Mr. Mackey. However, with a short time frame, talking from Jan, January, February to April, it's it's not going to take very long until we get to the middle of April. You know. I, I I guess my point is, I would think by April we would be able to secure the funding for that. That doesn't that doesn't seem unreasonable. Yeah. Now, Jan January fifteenth, maybe yes, but I don't know about April. Yeah, I think I think we just want to make sure that we were on the same page there, of not having any hiccups along the way that we had the funding in place. So we can look at the uh, the note, but I just want to make sure that we don't start into the project and then get to March or April and say, wait a minute, uh, we don't have the money in place here. So. But yes, I will include the swimming pool then as well in the repairs. Okay, um, so we're not gonna, we have this motion here. Um, Mr. White, should we withdraw the motion or vote it down? It I nice? think if, I think withdrawing the motion would make the most sense. If so if you have the withdrawal and the consent of the second. Yes. Uh, I'll make a motion to withdraw the motion. That was the second I consent. Okay, uh, motion's withdrawn and we'll have further discussion on that next, next Thursday. Uh, thank you everybody for engaging. Thank you, Mayor Slaughter and others. Okay, who's up next? Who's on first? <laughs> Mr. Banks. <laughs> well, I have, a, I have a small item here. Um, page 15, the city clerk budget. Since we're moving to go paperless, we shouldn't be receiving packets. So uh, the auto allowance, uh, 12007 I want to reduce that from $700 to zero. Okay. Um, there's a motion. Is there a second? Second. Discussion. We won't be paperless immediately, though. Uh, Mrs. Katz. Yes, if we all, I uh, have to understand that's part of her contract. Seven hundred dollars was part of her pay for when she was hired. 
So to take it away, you're deducting your pay by $700. So either you keep it or, you know, uh, I mean, you can't do, you can't take somebody's pay away from them when they signed up for the job to begin with. This has been an ongoing cost from previous city clerks. So when she was hired, this is what was promised her. But I, correct me if I'm wrong. I, my understanding, Bonnie, would be that the um, the idea is that Ms. Frank is spending $700 driving council materials to council people. And right, consequently, was, she will not need to, but she that won't was, need to spend that $700 in fuel if she's not driving packets. I know, but when it's part of somebody's contract, what you're doing is you're pulling it away. And second of all, we're not going to be paperless for almost a year. Except I think by, for, as far as council packets go, we already are. There are Have, still some of us been? that do get hard copies and we still get packets. Okay, I, I have not been receiving a packet <laughs> for most of this year. Um, but if, if that's still something that there will be a need for in for the for a part of 2020 or 2021, excuse me, um, then we could look at a reduction instead of a complete elimination. Okay, for me, I don't have all the programs on my computer for some of the things that are downloaded. So therefore I don't get to see some of this stuff. And that's why I need the hard copies. Unless, or I'm gonna have a program or a tablet that's gonna be given to me. I'm not gonna go spending money on programs that um, I'm not being paid for. And I think you can fully understand that. I mean, I can't, there's things I just can't see that come down. Okay. And I can tell you this much, Norm is the same way, Norm Lubin. So just just a thought. I mean, I, I don't so I don't take I don't get hard copies either. I mean, I have my own filing system that I use every every two weeks. It works for me. Um, you know, if, if people ask for it, I send it to them. Um, I think I feel like as a group um, and that includes the administration. I think we're somewhere in the middle. Um, I. I theoretically, I'm not sure if the savings from the paper that some of us don't take offset you know, the, the others, um, we're not going to be digital in, in three weeks. Um, I, I think we would be probably wise to, um, I think walk with this one before we run. I, it, it's a good thought. Um, and ultimately I think by this time next year, this is probably what we will be looking at, but, um, I don't want to leave anybody, um, uh, on the team between council the administration in the dark, if they are, um, not either not comfortable or, um, not able to access stuff completely digitally um, while we would save money um, we're going to lose efficiency as a group so um, we might we might be wise to wait a little bit on this one just a, just a thought since we're kind of in between I'm, I'm comfortable with drawing that motion it's seven hundred dollars and we're not going paperless until next year's but it you know it's a goal of ours so yep and a good goal so I would withdraw that motion. I'll second. Okay. Motion's withdrawn. Mr. Yoder? Um, yeah, so if we're throwing ideas out there, um, and this might be an idea that we need some more feedback from the administration, um, on page 17, Bureau of Law, um, legal services, um, we, we have a pretty substantial jump, um, in that contract, um, from last year to this year. I know that was as a result of RFPing those services. Um, I voted and supported that, that procedure, um, in hopes that, um, we would either validate what we're getting, um, or potentially, um, you know, leverage the theory of competition 
you know, driving efficiencies from that. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't appear to have worked. And I feel like um, if we are month to month, if we are in line or under budget in 2020, um, I think it would be a good idea to continue that into 2021 if the solicitors would do that um, and, and really try to take it either another stab um, or um, you know, maybe we work to negotiate something to whittle that down. Um, that, that, that jump is almost double and, um, it, it's, I, I just don't think it's feasible this year, uh, with, with what we're facing. So, um, I don't know if that's something the administration wants to take another week to take a look at and see if there's any, um, progress that may be able to be made or even, um, something that, that could be, committed to to be worked on for early next year um just a thought for everybody else on council and i'll i'll throw that out to the group before making a motion so we you know maybe eliminate some procedural stuff the administration care to look into that in the intervening time sure we can look into that um just uh, also a reminder that council does have full have responsibility over legal it's true yeah yeah, we do the, the hiring of the solicitor. Yeah, yeah, that's council's responsibility, but we can look into that, absolutely. Perfect. Thank you, Ms. Sire. <clears throat> Mr. Yoder? Uh, sure, I'll keep going. I have another um big one um it's between the police and the fire departments um let me pull up the pages for everybody let me find them sorry next time before i raise my hand i'll make sure i'm at the right page um so they are in regards to with the fire um light items 2420510040 on page 43 overtime and then with the police, um, the similar um, components, um, overtime and comp time on page 49, um, white items 51040, 51050. Um, you know, I, I understand the need um, with our public safety perspective and what have you and um, ensuring the city's safe, but um, I just, especially this year, I just think this level of overtime, we need to either do better at managing it um, or we need to push for um, more mutual aid from our um, surrounding municipal partners. Um, maybe it's the state police, maybe it's um, South Williamsport, maybe it's Old Lycoming. Um, you know, mutual aid is a two way street. Um, we need to do a better job of, I think, um, leveraging that. And um, I don't know if there's something that needs to be looked at um, over the next week in regards to that, but. Um, I would feel comfortable minimizing each of those budgets now um, to push the administration to leverage um, or use that strategy next year to help save us a little bit of money while keeping um, the city safe and not losing service potentially. So are, are you making a motion, Mr. Yoder, or are you um, the administration I, to work at it? Um, I mean, it's something the administration could look at. I mean, I have some rough numbers for each of those that uh, I, I was initially thinking of reducing each 30,000 each. Um, that'd be $90,000, but um, I see a couple hands up. So I don't know if we want to have discussion on it before making a motion. Mr. Yoder, or Mr. Mackey, rather. Uh, thank you, President Al. So, yeah, I guess just to kind of piggyback off of what Councilman Yoder is saying um, to maybe get into some more specific numbers, Chief Hagan. Could you just remind me again um, of that $180,000 overtime budget? How much of that is um, allocated to the two officers we have working in the, um, the countywide task force? Um, numbers, rough numbers from January through the middle of November, if they weren't assigned there, and they were on patrol, then uh, 60 to 70,000 potentially could have been prevented. Now that's that's spread out over overtime and comp time. It's not 
from one, they can choose either or when they when they work overtime, they can make it comp or overtime. Um, but I think there may be a uh, uh, for the benefit of those of you that are in your first year, this these numbers were historically higher. And what occurred was a couple of years ago, the overall number of officers was re reduced by four. Um, so what that means is, is that four positions, if unless you remove all the special assignments, and that means the one officer assigned to the marshals, the two officers assigned to the countywide drug task force, potentially the officers who is at the school, although that that salary is reimbursed. But being up at the school means that that officer can't cover overtime. And uh, when so that occurred, and then also the minimum manpower standard was reduced on seven shifts or six shifts a, a week out of 21 from four to three on two of the shifts. And, uh, and we believed and made the argument last year that that was unsafe for a city this size. I still believe that. Um, there were also other issues uh, in the last administration. There was uh, a, what we believe was a, a, an overuse of the OIC policy. There were some 377 shifts between 2016 and 2018 where there was no supervisor on duty at all in a police department this size our administration believes that that's unacceptable. We do have to do that once in a while out of necessity when there's no one available, but to choose to not have a supervisor on given the level of liability that we face in the city is unacceptable if we have one available. So overtime is affected by those things. Overtime is also affected by unforeseen things like how many people have babies that year, how many people get injured, how many suspensions occur, um, how many people get hired and have to go to the police academy and are gone for six months and don't count toward manpower versus how many of them on the list just happen to be academy graduates at the time they get hired. That's the luck of the draw really. Um, and so it can't really be planned for. Um, so what we did was we changed the minimum manpower back to where it was before and we assigned a couple guys to uh, the county narcotics unit as mr mackey said knowing that that would create some overtime however realizing the extraordinary value of that of having those uh, incredibly high skilled individuals in that unit and the dramatic effect that it has on public safety we can't uh, according to uh, my knowledge of the contract and the existing uh, situation, we can't just say that Penn College or the state police are our minimum manpower at the beginning of the shift. We do on a regular basis when necessary, call them for mutual aid and they call us. And I have many times over the course of this year called the state police for assistance. Um, the most recent example, uh, when we had the big uh, COVID outbreak, I called them for help uh, with the shooting on Penn Street and they took that case for us. So we do this on a regular basis. We don't believe that overtime is being mismanaged. We believe that we have to have a certain number of people on the street. And if we're gonna cut the overall number of people or not have enough, uh, what, what we believe to be enough people, then we're gonna pay more overtime. The more staff we have, the less overtime. The less staff we have, the more overtime, unless you're willing to cut the minimum number down or get rid of all the special assignments. Um, we believe the special assignments that we have right now are very necessary and productive. We could, we could pull them um, if that's what you want, but then we will not have a direct link with one of our officers in the Fugitive Task Force. It will be, much, it, it will be more difficult to find wanted people, particularly those involved in violent crimes than it is now. Um, if we don't have people in the County Drug Task Force, then we, don't, we will not have a direct effect um, the same sort of effect that we have on all of those investigations. Certainly, we would not have seen the level of productivity from that county unit that we did this year. So we believe the value is there. Um, we lowered the number here recently. 
from 180 uh, last year down to 160. And, uh, and some things occurred uh, that we did not plan on and, and we came in over budget. So we believe after speaking with the finance director and the mayor that 180 was appropriate. If we need to lower it, then we're gonna have to make changes to services in my opinion. And, and, and so we just need to know what you want. Well, yeah, and I appreciate everything that you said. And believe me, um, maybe with the exception of the brick streets money, none of these cuts have been easy for me. I can just speak personally. <laughs> Sorry, that was a brick streets joke. Um, but uh, I guess my question for you, Chief, is if we pulled those two officers back from the county task force, what would be an appropriate number for us to lower the overtime and the comp time by without causing any too much trouble? I think if we pull those two positions out, we could safely go 15 to 20 lower in each category, um, given the fact that uh, their presence in patrol, those positions presence in patrol this year would have uh, would have saved between 60 and 70 between January and November. I think we could safely go down 15, maybe 20 at the most in each one. Okay, uh, sorry, Mr. Banks. Uh, I see Mr. Banks has his hand up. Well, I, I think we're talking about, uh, Mr. Yoder brought up two different things here. Um, one, I wanna address the fire over time before I get into the police over time, because the fire, um, you know, Chief Killing, I think can elaborate on this more, but they're really just trying to make up for the fact that they don't have enough people on the fire, in the fire department to work all the shifts that need to be worked. Is that correct, Chief? Um, not necessarily. So, so I can, I'll, I'll echo a lot of the points that Chief Hagan did. Um, we don't, you know, the vast majority of our overtime is simply maintaining minimum staffing. Um, and we have that overtime number has been reduced by some $150,000 over the course of the last three years. Um, you'll see, you know, $275,000 last year reduced to $230,000. Um, and that is simply because, you know, as, as the new administration came in, we made changes um, to we, we eliminated an administrative chief and put that position back on the floor. Um, we leveled all of our shifts off at eight personnel assigned to each shift. Our minimum staffing currently sits at six personnel during the day, Monday through Friday, and seven nights and weekends. Um, that minimum staffing has existed since the uh, late 90s um, and is extremely important so we can maintain you know, fire apparatus and service. Uh, to try to reduce the overtime number would potentially get us to the point where we have to take an engine out of service um, and eliminate the alliance that we have with Ole Cumming Township. Um, you know, it, it could, you know, we, we won't for safety's sake operate a vehicle with one person on it. So um, it, it'd be a, a significant challenge um, to try to get that number lower. Now, now, mind you, that is a projection. So there is, as with this year, our overtime numbers projected to come in lower for 2020 than previously expected. Um, so there is a good likelihood uh, that that number could come in lower uh, again for 2021. So, but to directly answer your question, um, it's not that we don't have enough firefighters to fill the shifts. Uh, we do, it's just maintaining that those uh, minimum numbers given uh, specifically around high vacation times like this time of the year. Generally quarter four is our, our highest overtime you know, quarter as, as firefighters take vacation and those shifts just need to be filled in. Um, I have been working with the union on some creative solutions to how vacation is taken um, and when that vacation be can be taken in an attempt to further reduce that number, but those discussions are, are still ongoing. Thank you, Chief. Now jump back over to police, sorry to sidetrack everybody here. Um, I mean, what it sounds like is that we're, we're overextended. I, I do like having those two officers in the county, Narcotics Enforcement Unit, I think they do a great job, but they're not paid for entirely by the county enforcement unit in, in, in terms of what the city puts out. You know, the city doesn't have those officers on the street, or we don't have an equivalent number of officers on the street while they're over there. So I think that's what we're 
what we're faced with it is, is a decision about um, the manning levels we have versus what the men are doing. And it, can we afford that? So, I mean, is that what you're getting at, Mr. Yoder? Yeah. I can uh, provide a bit of history there. The city used to have the make up the main element of that unit. The county uh, had one detective historically or none um, until for many years until 2010 um, when uh, uh, the DA at the time, uh, Eric Linhart, decided to bring it back under local control and start hiring detectives. At any moment, the county could decide to stop doing that. They're funding this unit and the salary and benefits of the entire unit. But there was a day not so long ago when they did not do that. And um, they may decide not to do that. So um, plus our officers are more familiar with the city and the, the people in it than detectives who are hired um, from other areas to come in here and work. And so our officers uh, provide a particular service. Right now, one of the two officers assigned there is actually in charge of the county narcotics enforcement unit. Um, so this unit, while it does that, is also uh, available to do like very, very important surveillance and things like that for us. Not that they wouldn't still be there, but we don't control whether the county continues to fund that unit or not. And uh, my concern in the years to come is that that could dry up. Um, so uh, we thought based on their talent level, certainly this year, some of the violent crimes that we had, some of the people that were still on the street, open investigations and some of the things I can't talk about in public, that it was a good decision. The mayor agreed this year. We knew we were gonna take a bit of a hit on overtime, but it, I think it was a responsible decision to make this year um, despite the, the cost. Now, having said that, I spoke a little earlier about uh, the savings that could occur. What I don't know uh, right now, this year, the one that's about to finish, the two officers that, uh, that were assigned over there in January would have been on different shifts. And so that's why they would have been able to cover as much overtime. And, you know, the estimate involved overtime on two different shifts. I don't know if we brought them back this year where they would fall in the seniority roster. If they ended up on two different shifts, then they would be able to cover a similar amount of overtime. But if they all end up on the same shift, then the number would be quite different. Um, they wouldn't be able to cover as much. So I would have to look at where the bids were for the shifts and seniority, assuming that it's the same as next year is the same as this year. 15 to 20 per would would be, I think, accurate. Also, um, uh, we could pull the, the officer back from the marshals as well if we needed to, um, and that would save some. Uh, obviously, in manpower overtime, especially in high vacation seasons or when we have injuries, um, so that's an option as well. Um, and uh, I just wanted to let you know that. Thank you, Chief. Yeah, I think the, the issue that we're, we're, you know, we talk about regionalization of the police and fire all the time as some sort of amorphous concept out there. But what we're doing right now is providing some of those services at the cost of the taxpayer of Williamsport, you know, especially with people going to the county and people going to the sheriffs. You know, we're, we're giving at least a part of that funding, you know, to a broader audience that is not just specific to Williamsport. Um, and so it's in terms of of just the dollars and cents, I don't think we can afford um, to, to pay for county services. That would be accurate with regard to Marshall's, um, although most of, of his work is in the city. More than 97% of the county narcotics drug cases are in the city limits, believe it or not. So um, uh, actually the vast majority of their work is here already. It's the county giving us help, really, in this particular case, and it's it's really a, a big gift from them because, like I said, it didn't exist before. But um, everyone understands; we understand the dilemma this year, and if we need to pull them back, that's what we'll do. It's ugly, Chief. It's ugly either way. Thanks. Well, 
uh, if that's the case, the chief, and I, I really appreciate you saying that. And, you know, this would be with the, maybe the caveat of, you know, not knowing what 2022 is going to look like. Maybe we can be involved in that task force again. Um, you're saying 15 or 20 from each of those budgets um, would, would do the job. Um, but do I need to make two separate motions on each one of those line items or uh, Austin, or can I do them both at the same time? You need two separate two separate motions all right then uh, I make a motion in reference to uh, line item two four four zero five one zero four zero overtime to reduce that from 180 to 160. I'll second that there's a motion and a second um, any further discussion from council members? Hearing and seeing none, Mrs. Frank on the motion, please. Mr. Yoder. Yes. Mr. Mack. Yes. Mr. Polizzi. I don't think he's here, Janice. He's not here right okay. now, Janice. Right. Um, Mrs. Cat. Yes. Mr. Banks. Yes. Ms. Mealy. Yes. Mr. Allison. Yes. Motion passes 6 0. All right. Uh, President Allison, should I just keep going then? Yes. Yeah. So uh, I'll make a motion uh, on line item 2440510050 comp time to reduce that from 180 to 160. I'll second. There's a motion and a second. Any further discussion from council? Mr. Banks? Uh, given that the range the chief gave us is between 15 and 20, should we shave that down by 5,000? Um, just because we don't want to max out, you know, both of those estimates. I'm, I'm okay with that. Uh, do you want to amend? Then? So I'll, I'll uh, make a motion to amend that comp time from 180 to uh, 165. Uh, who seconded that, Mr. Yoder? Uh, yeah, I'll second it. Okay, uh, on the motion to amend, Mrs. Frank, please. Mr. Yoder? Yes. Mr. Mackey? Yes. Mrs. Cat. Yes. Mr. Bank. Yes. Ms. Mealy. Yes. Mr. Allen. Yes. Motion passes. So uh, it's an, the amendment. Uh, then the the original motion to make the cut. Is there any other discussion on that? Okay, Mrs. Frank, on that motion, please. Mr. Yoder. Yes. Mr. Mackey. Yes. Mr. Polizzi. Mrs. Cat. Yes. Mr. Banks. Yes. Ms. Mealy. Yes. Mr. Allison. Yes. Motion passes fix it up. Thank you, Mrs. Frank. Mr. Mackey. I can keep going. Yes. That's all right. Uh, yeah, if I could take everybody to page 32. Um, I, I'd like to make a motion to, um, zero out the swimming pool budget from 101,691 to zero and suggest that we keep the pool closed this year and, uh, finally fix it for good. And again, as we talked about earlier, that would be, um, through a, some type of a loan as Miss Mealy mentioned. There's a motion. Is there a second? Second. There's a motion second. Mr. Podluck. I just want to, um, I sent an email out earlier today uh, going yeah. through the the uh, question from last week. Um, so looking at that, I think that if, if all the sources are there, we'll have to also eliminate um, any pool admissions 
uh, and the concessions that were planned. Mm -hmm. um, so reducing all those line items will amount to 70,691. Um, I would like to keep some money in the electric uh, along with the water um, and the workers comp, which is allocated or transfer into another uh, line item. I'm not sure if, if everyone follows me on that, but um, there are certain lines that are going to happen, whether the pool's open or closed. Right, um, but Joe, if I can interrupt for a minute, this is Joe Girardi. Um, if you're gonna do that with the pool, then I'm assuming like chemical supplies and so forth would also be in a different line item that would be dropped also, correct? Correct, the, the, if, if everything was taken out, it would result initially there was a net loss of, of 70,691, but we'd have to add back in um, some electric to, to run the pool lights, the, the overnight lights that are, that are there. Um, and then the, the, the minimum water fee, which would be around 200. Um, and then we allocate workers comp amongst all departments and, and the allocation that we have in there is 2,400 for proposed for 2021. So we'd have to reallocate that to another department or amongst all departments or just keep it there. Okay, so you're saying keep the workers comp. How, what do you think would be a safe number for the electric? Uh, I don't know if I can, we can do it this way. No, okay. Um, it just here's, well, again, just, just let me know how we need to do it. But again, I, it, it's my suggestion that we keep the pool closed this year. Again. I, I understand that. I think, let me run some numbers. Um, I think that the total change would be around uh, an increase to the bottom line of $67,091. Mr. White, would we have to reduce each line item separately? Yes, you would. I'm not the attorney, but yes, you would. No. You would have to go into each individual line item and reduce it by by amendment. Um, Mr. Mr. Um, Mr. Allison, yeah. if, if this is a, you know, if if this is all part of one um, reduction, and they're all reductions, um, so long as each one is being said, what it's being reduced to, and it's done, um, you know, in, in a way that it's clear. For the record, I'm okay combining a few of them, so long as they are all reductions and they're all part of the same sort of um, uh, overall re reduction. Okay, would it would it make more sense for us to give uh, Mr. Pavlov time to? I can I can read them right now based on what I sent out this morning. Can okay. we include revenues and expenditures together, Mr. White? Um, yeah, if, if it's going, if you're going to be reducing something in the budget, yes. Okay. Um, do you want me to, should I read them out to everyone, all the changes? I think that would be best, Joe. Perhaps okay. John would make a motion to, to amend the, the budget for pools and the pool um, incomes as specified by Joe Pavlock, and then you read them out. Is that the best way to do it, Randy? That, that sounds reasonable. Okay. Can you, let, can you amend your motion, Mr. Mackey? Uh, yeah, I'll try and get that terminology <laughs> correct <laughs> there, Liz. Uh, I will make an amendment to, um, re was it reduce the uh, pool, swimming pool program budget as read by Joe Pavlock? Does that work? And and, uh, and pool in, and pool income lines and, and pool income lines. Sorry, is there a I'll second? second that. Okay, there's a motion and a second to amend the original motion. Um, Mrs. Frank, on the are, are there any other comments on that? Should I should I read them in before she? Yep, please. 
Okay, so on page nine, uh, line 0504-44220, pool emissions from 30,000 to zero. Uh, same page nine, 0504-44230, pool concessions from 1,000 to zero. Um, on page 32, 2291-51050, seasonal salaries. 51,191 to zero. Um, line 2291-52010 FICA, 3,900 to zero. Um, workers' comp will remain the same. Um, line 2291-75082 electric from 3,700 to 1,000. Line 2291-61010, pool supplies from 4,000 to zero. Line 2291-61011, bathhouse supplies from 1,500 to zero. Line 2291-63040, pool preparation from 10,000 to zero. Line 2291-76040, pool equipment repairs from 7,000 to zero. Line 2291-76050, bathhouse equipment repairs from 1,000 to zero. Um, line 2291-75011, water from 3,000 to 200. Line 2291-64010, equipment from 5,000 to zero. And line 2291-62150, uh, chemicals from 9,000 to zero. Thank you, Mr. Pavlov. Thank you for anticipating uh, all of this and having that ready to go. Um, we have a motion and a second and all those changes on the amended motion. Um, we never voted on the motion to amend though, I don't believe. Nope, we didn't. Yeah, so let's go to that first. The motion to amend, Mrs. Frank. Mr. Yoder. Yes. Mr. Mackey. Yes. Just can Bonnie? Yes. Mr. Bank? Yes. Ms. Mia? Yes. Mr. Allen? Yes. Motion passes 6 though on the amended motion that Mr. Pavlock just uh, read through. Um, any discussions on that? No. Thank you, Joe, for doing the heavy lifting. Yeah, yeah. Um, this is Joe Girardi again. Can I ask a question? Yes, certainly. Um, if, we're, if we're shutting the pool down this year, okay, um, and we do know we do have some leak problems. I, I don't know if it's been set aside, but it might be in the best interest of the city to set aside some funds to try to research it, not necessarily do a study, but um, we have qualified master plumbers who know where to find leaks. Um, Mr. Allison, you've been involved in that business and finding leaks and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, it might be a good suggestion just to set aside some money for that. Just want to throw that out there. Point well taken. Um, and I'm not talking a lot of money. I'm talking maybe 10, 15,000, which would cover some air testing and so forth and some of the lines coming in, doing some excavation, plugging some lines and putting some air in the line. Just, I want to throw that out there. Mr. Yoder. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a very good point. Um, I, I know previously we had talked about um, looking at a potential bond um, or, or note um, for IT Bowman Field in the pool. Um, I don't know why we couldn't potentially include that um, in that. Um, so food for thought. Right. Yeah, I just thought if you're, if we're going to close the pool down, this would be the year to look for that leak. Yep. Right. That's, I, I think we all absolutely agree and a very good point. I, since we're talking all things pool, um, 
we haven't really discussed this, but um, regardless of what we do to make preparations and uh, related to what Mr. Girardi said, I, I think we should have a discussion about the pool, the future of the pool period. Um, you know, do a little digging and research and talk with the administration about it. is that really the way we want to go? Just so, just a food for thought, Mrs. Katz. Randy, I think that's really a good point that you're bringing up. Um, I, how many times have we said we don't make money with the pool? And what if we get the pool fixed up? And I think this has been brought up by uh, John Sanders even. Um, why can't we look into maybe leasing the pool to a private entity that they would probably be able to uh, maybe make money with the pool? For some reason, we have never, and I, I, I don't ever remember us uh, even breaking even. Joe, is that true that we really don't break even ever? Since I've been on council, I don't remember that. That's correct. I don't think that it's ever broke even, even when it was operated under the um, outside agency. So therefore, you know, it's it's one of those things that, you know, it's great for the community, but maybe if a private entity came in, they would be uh, uh, more uh, conducive to making uh, bigger plans that we aren't capable of doing and don't even have the the uh, the knowledge or even the the stamina to to go after something to make it even uh, bigger or better. I would hate to see the pool closed down completely. I really would. I think I, if you know, I would like to have a discussion with council of maybe pursuing a, a private entity to see if we could lease it out. I think they're all they're all good points. Nothing we're going to solve this evening, but we've got the the uh, discussion started, so uh, we'll pick that up in the future and uh, keep that make that a uh, one of our discussion points in 2021. Mr. Yoder. Uh, yeah, to that point, um, you know, if we're if we're talking about um, different options for the pool. Um, something else that we as the city may want to consider um, just may be the strategy of our recreation department as a whole. Um, I know that in the past, I think the, the recreation programs have been done by somebody else externally. They were brought back into the city. Um, given the financial picture, because um, I believe we really don't make any money, we, lo we lose money in that area as well. Um, that may be something else. Maybe we approach um, another nonprofit in the in the city that may be better equipped to run those. Um, you know that saves us a lot of legacy costs um, and additional costs um, by transitioning both of those off of our books. So it's a good point, um, and I, I think I don't think recreation through a, a governmental agency is anything that's designed or the intention is to make a profit. It's, it's to provide a service mm -hmm. uh, to the community. Um, and we probably want to find the best, most economical way to do that. And it may be some of the things you're talking about. Um, so again, it's definitely something we have to put on the front burner in 2021, I would agree. Okay, I think we're done with that discussion there and we had our vote. Uh, we had to vote on the amended motion. We never voted on the original motion. So I, I suppose we should do that, right, Mr. White? Yes, I was waiting for that, Mr. Ellis. <laughs> Trying to keep my notes straight here. Okay. Um, Mrs. Frank on the original motion. Mr. Young? Yes. Mr. Mack? Yes. Mrs. Cat? Yes. Mr. Bank? Yes. Ms. Mill? Yes. Mr. Allison? Yes. Thank you, Mrs. Frank. Motion passes zero.
Okay, on to Mrs. Katz. Yes, while we're on the rec, still talking about the rec uh, department, one of the things that has been under the rec department has been special events. Right. And if we're going to be looking and discussing uh, what to do with the rec department, special events has got to be a topic of conversation. Um, some of the things that are done with the special events are money makers for the city. Right. But on the other hand, um, maybe it would behoove us to maybe find an outside source that could, um, and this is just up for discussion, that could run the special, special events and uh, maybe do a percentage that the city would get back from it. Uh, you know, I, I don't know how we could do that, but, you know, again, uh, the city shouldn't be into special events. Thank you. Uh, that's going to be a discussion. Yeah, we're going to have a general discussion on all those things. Thank you, Mr. Kent. Okay, back to the budget under there. Mr. Banks. So I'm on page 60. I'm looking at the line item for the MS4 Chesapeake Bay PRP. Um, now, since we're looking to the uh, water and sewer sanitary authority to manage our MS4 permit and the pollution reduction plan, um, and we, sh we, I think we're doing, looking to switch that over in short order. Um, I think we should reduce this, uh, maybe not entirely, but I was, I'm proposing to amend this um, to reduce it to 50,000, so take 125,000. Uh, there's a motion. Is there a second? Second. There's a motion and a second. Reduce uh, that line item from, it's a new line item, from uh, 175 to one, uh, to reduce it by 125,000 to 50. Uh, discussion. What page was that again? I'm sorry. 60. Thank you. Um, Randy, one thing that I apologize had not occurred to me or in earlier discussions I had about this with Mr. Banks, um, uh, which is that um, Act 13 funds have specific and limited uses. Um, so I just want to double check with Mr. Pavlock because I'm not familiar with all the uses of Act 13 funding. Um, uh, that by um, cutting this budget, we leave uh, 125,000 in Act 13 um, effectively. Uh, I know the money can be used for streets, which we've already reduced. It, it can be used for other stormwater needs like Raffius Run. What other things can it be used for within the city? Can you give me um, a few minutes to, to pull up the record? Yep, yeah, sure. Uh, I'm fine with moving ahead on this one way or the other, guys. I'm just trying to figure out that that money needs, you know, is, is dedicated to certain items. So, um, so we'll need to figure out exactly which uh, where we want to dedicate it then moving forward. And and Dave, like I said, I, I talked about this with you, and honestly, this should have occurred to me. I apologize if this didn't. So um, I wanted to bring it up now, and we said so that we can even if, if we don't deal with it this week, we can deal with it next week. When we, you know, if, if we table the budget and look at it again, okay. It's okay. I'm I'm a silly person. I don't mind looking silly. Um, <laughs> I know yeah. you're not silly. I just I, I just I, I knew about it and I should have pointed it out. I'm sorry. But, um, well, the one thing I would bring to mind is you know under the Act 13 fund budget, we have an information technology line item as we're talking about this um, need for upgrades. Could that be used for information technology? I just pulled up the report. I'll send this out to everyone tomorrow. Um, under information technology, uh, the class indicates, or the general description is records management, geographic information systems, and information technology. Um, my understanding is that they were very general with their classifications, um, but we would wanna make sure that it's something that falls within. The, the, the specific categories that are listed, but I can send you out the categories tomorrow. 
Thank you, Mr. Conlon. Good, uh, good point there, Councilwoman Neely. Well, regardless of where it goes, I mean, do other members of council think it would be wise to reallocate that if we're going to move forward with um, having these, these sanitary authority and the water authority manage our MS war permit? Yes, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. That, that's that's actually moving along nicely. Good to hear. Mm -hmm. Um, any other discussion from council on this particular item? Um, hearing none on the motion, please, Mrs. Frank. Mr. Young. Yes. Mr. Matt. Yes. Mrs. Cat. Yes. Mr. Van. Yes. Ms. Mayor. Yes. Mr. Allen. Yes. Motion passes six zero. Thank you, Mrs. Crank. Um, Mr. Mackey. Yeah, sorry. Uh, well, just to kind of stay with, go back to the the swimming pool here or recreation, since it's just to maybe close this one out. Um, page thirty. Uh, I'd like to make a, an amendment to uh, line item. Let me make sure I have the right one here. Two 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 zero five one zero one zero salaries. Uh, reduce that by ten thousand. I don't think if we have a pool that we need a, a rec assistant. I'll second it. There's a motion in a second. Is there a discussion? Um, hearing and seeing none, Mrs. Frank on the motion, please. Mr. Yoder. Yes. Mr. Mackey. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Mr. Bank. Yes. Ms. Bailey. Yes. Mr. Allison. Yes. Motion passes six zero. Thank you, Mr. Frank. Sorry, I got one more Councilman Yoder and <laughs> then I'll be quiet. Uh, I guess before I before I make um, a motion, um, if we could go to page 57, uh, and this would be a question for, I guess, the administration, the mayor. Um, line item 46230, rental income in 2020. We budgeted 300,000, but it looks like we're only gonna collect about 251,000. Um, why that, why is that? And I guess that would be my first question. No, can you, can you answer that one? Um, in an attempt to, to save everywhere that we could, there is a, a balance in the city hall fund. Um, so we felt that we would reduce um, essentially it's only putting 25 additional uh, or putting additional 25,000 towards the bottom line, uh, in 2020, getting us closer to what we're expecting to spend, um, versus what we were anticipating to spend. What is the, and what is the balance of the, the city hall account? Uh, I want to say it's in the 800 that was intended to be used for, um, other renovations and past projects that were were let for bid. Uh, so then, I mean, I guess my question would be, would it, would it be wise for us to, to set that back at 300 for 2021? Uh, uh, depends on the future of City Hall. It, it, it's, it's ultimately a question there. If we want to keep building money for renovations. Um, well, that correct me if I'm wrong, that money could be used to help us move too, correct? Um. Currently, we're setting around uh, aside for the maintenance and operation of the building itself. I'm not sure whether there be any restrictions or whether council could lift those, any restrictions. I, I, I don't. I, I believe so. Yes, but I don't. I can't confirm that. I'd have to look into it. All right. Well, I guess with that being said, then I I'd like to make a motion to um to amend line item. 
46230 to raise the proposed rental income from 250 to 300,000. Okay. And that. Mr. Pavla. Uh, with that motion, there's also going to need to be an amendment to the, the general fund budget to increase city hall rents to cover that payment since that payment's coming from the general fund. Okay. Is the motion, is there a second? I believe Dave seconded it. Did second it. Oh, you did. I'm sorry. I missed that. Motion and a second. Um, discussion. Um, yes, Joe explained, will we have to go into every line item then to increase the rent? Austin, will we have to do that? We allocate it based on uh, space in the building. Um, if council puts it in one line item, I think that we can just pay it from that one line item and it would reflect in the estimates. You're looking at 2021, 20 or 2021, I'm sorry, Mr. Mackey. I'm looking at uh, 2021, it's, it's set at 250,000. Last year it was set at 300. If you do that, I can come back with an allocation to increase everyone or if, if council chooses, we can just do one specific budget. I, I don't know that it matters either way. Austin, what do you think we should be doing? I think that if if it's at, if it's if the two hundred and fifty thousand is for all of the units, um, I, I I'm okay with it being reduced as one line item, and then Joe Joe going going uh, through the numbers and allocating it. I think that's what I heard. Well, I think I think we're increasing it here, and we'll need to increase. Um, if we allocate it based on space, we'll have to increase a number of items. So I guess would the, the other side to this change be an increase to the um, office space use in the general, just some way to, that I can allocate it to get to that $50,000 number without specifically naming tonight the, the line items? Let's just pick one. Pick a department, pick a line item. Who cares? Fine, okay. either way. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't. I don't know if. I mean, six one six one way half dozen the other. It's. I mean, all that we're doing is putting money into an account. I mean, it's all we're doing. So it just what it wouldn't reflect the space that they're using, which is is fine. That's we can fix it going forward. Yeah. But we're taking fifty thousand from the bottom line, correct? You will. It, you're increasing a line here. Am, am I correct? We're incre increasing from two fifty to three hundred, so we would have to increase one line in the general fund to by fifty thousand dollars to match the change to fund the number coming into this fund. Let's put it in the mayor's office. <laughs> Oh, sure, Bonnie, pass the buck. <laughs> <laughs> if you're going to decrease the amount by 50000 I think Joe needs just to go back through and equally distribute that amongst the department so it comes out to be 50000 if I'm correct. Correct, Joe? That's, what, that's why I asked, because that would have to go to every line item then. It, for rent. It's all going to the same account. Who cares? Let's which, which whichever is easy. It's just not going to show. The, it's not going to reflect the space usage. Um, Correct. It, it, I, I, you can put it in my department. For all that matters, it's 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 just a, uh, an allocation amongst the departments. I think you should allow Joe to <clears throat> allocate it um, as a result of a uh, a vote tonight, and then. I'm assuming that it would be in the budget for the next meeting. And if someone has an issue with the way it looks, they can, we can deal with it at that time. Before so the, the motion would be to increase the office line or office rental lines in the general fund by 50,000 um, per um, an allocation determined by the finance department. Yeah. And equitably distribute or e equitably allocate. I just want to make the easiest motion, get it done, you know, rather than going through each one. Okay. I think I know where we're going. 
that somebody does. <laughs> um, okay, we have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Uh, hearing and seeing none on the motion. Mr. Yoder. Yes. Mr. Mackey. Yes. Mrs. Katz. Yes. Mr. Banks. Yes. Ms. Neely. Yes. Mr. Allison. Yes, motion passes 6 0. Thank you, Mrs. Frank. Um, Mr. Yoder. Um, yeah, uh, two, two questions and then potentially two uh, amendments to the budget. Um, I'm on page 14, City Council, line item 11007820, other expenditures. What is that? Remind me of that. Uh, this year that included some of the, uh, remote fees, the, the, um, transcribing of the, the meetings. Um, and then also in the past, it included, um, meeting supplies, I believe. Okay. Um, then I will, um, I will make one um, motion for amendment. Um, line item one one zero zero nine or seven nine five four zero legislative contingency. Um, I'd move to reduce that from one hundred thousand to seventy five thousand. Um, seems to me that the past two years we haven't used anything out of that, um, so taking a little bit out of that shouldn't hurt us. Um, and if others feel that we can take more out of it, that's up for debate, but. I'll make that motion. There's a motion. Is there a second? Second. second. Discussion. Mr. Banks. So I'd actually like to hear from um, you, President Allison, and Mrs. Katz and Ms. Mealy, um, as you have the you're, you're the elder statesman. Um, how has this been used in the past? We've used this uh, legislative contingency in the past um, for across the board for um, the, the entire city government uh, to, to use as needed for uh, legal issues, uh, things like that that have come up. Um, so it, you know, it, it's been a cooperative resting place for the whole government. Uh, Ms. So, <laughs> I, 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 oh, okay. can I chime in? Yes. I think generally speaking, the money from this line item often winds up just falling to the bottom line at the end of the year. It's basically a holding place in case um, we need a little bit of money for something legislative, say, un unforeseen. Um, re reducing it shouldn't make a dramatic difference. Um, it would just mean that we might have to find the money elsewhere if there were if there were a need for it somewhere in, in government. If we know that for 2020 budget is 175, and we had contracts being negotiated and. That was the uh, contingency for, for some of that. So um, I, I don't think uh, we have any expected high dollar items. Uh, I'll defer to the administration in that. I just ask that council use caution in doing that as, as we're cutting lines, um, you know, everywhere you're not leaving contingencies within other lines. So this will be the only place that there's money set aside potentially 
uh, for unforeseen expenses. So I, I just exercise caution um, with any changes because this year could be a different year than others where um, there was flexibility uh, throughout other departments. Thank you, Ms. Pavlon. Ms. Randy? Pat, yes. I, you know, Joe, that's really, that's really a, a good point because we're, we're really treading in different waters, especially coming into next year. Um, you don't know what's going to happen. Uh, it, it, we really haven't used it all over the years, but we don't, you know, we're really getting into sketchy areas at this point. So what Joe said could be, you know, uh, let's tread softly. Can yeah, we divide would, this a little bit? <laughs> yeah, if I can, if I can chime in, I, I completely agree. I mean, you know, I, I only have data for the past two years from last year's book and then this year's book. And I mean, we, we, we haven't touched it the past two years. Um, you know, I, I would agree. I, you know, without hearing much from the administration, um, if there is anything on the horizon that we may or may not um, know about, but um, you know, it doesn't seem like there's much on the horizon and leaving $75,000 in there still, I think um, gives us a little bit of a cushion, um, whether it goes to the bottom line at the end of the year, or, you know, we have something in there in case something happens, um, you know, in the situation we're in every, every $25,000 helps. Um, so it just seemed like a place where we could easily take, um, while still leaving some cushion in there. So. As you know, I can see that Adam, you know, let's leave some cushion. We really do. You know, I, I don't want to deplete it down too low because again, like I said, we don't know where we're treading next year. Understood. Well, and, and, and to Joe's point, I think it's one thing, most of the cuts that we make within the budget are geared toward visualizing an actual place that the cut's coming from. When we cut the police overtime budget, the goal, the, the, the idea was that we were um, removing manpower that had been allocated to a county task force. Um, when we cut this budget, we, we're not cutting it with anything in mind. The number is falling to the bottom line, but whether or not it gets spent is not changing because there's nothing we're not spending the money on. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so I don't know that we're, I don't know that we're affecting anything. If, if, if we cut it, that's fine. But, but I don't know that we're affecting anything one way or the other. Well, whittling down a tax, that's certainly effective um, in my perspective, but um, I understand your point. Other questions or comments? Well, I guess I, my question would be once again kick back to you, Randy. How far has this been drawn down in the years that we have drawn it down? Um, that's a good. <laughs> you're asking me to dust off my. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm asking you to go through 11 years of. Yeah. Meetings. Um, we generally don't use it all. Um, there have been years that it was. Uh, there were specific things we had it allocated for, uh, and and we did use a lot of it. I um, I'd have to look look it up to to actually have um, you know a specific way to address that. Okay. Um, well, I, I guess my next question would go to Joe. Then Joe, do we do? Do we end up doing transfers from this fund? And, and if so, it's kind of the same question. Yeah, um, we do. How much has been transferred from this fund? With to, does, it, does it ever get depleted, I guess is what I'm getting at. As long, if there's not money in other funds to, to, to move money from, then we would transfer it from here. Um, in other years, we were able to um, give ourselves some flexibility within the individual department line items um, so that we may not necessarily have needed to use uh, this contingency line item. I think as this year has proven, you know, there's been a lot of unexpected in, in, in trying to get where we started. Um, we were removing a lot of things within the department. So that's why I'm saying just please exercise caution uh, because I don't think that the, the flexibility or the room that was within the departments in the past is, is currently there. 
Yeah, I agree. I, I would be much more flexible with the cushion than not. I want to get any trouble I'm down the line. Thank you. Any other discussion on this? I mean, I think all the points are well taken. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's a tough one because we do need, uh, we're treading water a little bit tonight. We do need um, to make some savings. I think we do. Um, I think, uh, You know, it, it's unpredictable. So I think everyone's going to have to make their uh, own decision on it. Um, I'm kind of leaning towards uh, going with the 75. But any other discussion? Okay, Mrs. Frank, on the motion, please. Mr. Yoder. Yes. Mr. Mackey. Yes. Mrs. Katz. Yes. Mr. Bass. No. Ms. Mill. No. Mr. Allen. Yes. Motion passes 4 2. Thank you, Mrs. Frank. Um, any other uh, Mr. Banks? Yeah, I have a, this is going to be a difficult one. Uh, page 49. Um, I'm looking at the salaries line item 2440. Five one zero one zero. I'd like to reduce that by forty thousand. This is in regards to our non-uniform um, services. Did, I'm sorry. Did you say account five one zero one zero? Correct. Did did if you're talking non-uniform, that's five one zero eight zero. Oh, thank you for the correction. I just want to make sure that we're. Looking at what you're looking at? Yes. Thank you. Uh, 51080, thank you. Second. Discussion. I don't think there's much to for me to say on this one. It's this is a difficult one, um, but you know we had a, we had a discussion about the Spillman software making the, that area more efficient, but we saw the same number of personnel. Mm -hmm. so that's where this comes from. I guess I should speak. <laughs> I, uh, I've said all I can say about it. Uh, we, uh, we will operate with what you provide us with. We will do the best we can. And we will report back to you on the success or failure of those operations. Thank you. Thanks, Chief. Thank you, Chief. Um, uh, okay, we have that on that particular line item, and we're going to have to change some others in relation to that. Um, but are there any other motions on that uh, discussion? I'm sorry, on that motion. Uh, hearing none, Mrs. Frank on the motion. Mr. Yoder. Yes. Mr. Mackey. Yes. Mrs. Cal. Yes. Mr. Banks. Yes. Ms. Mealy. Yes. Mr. Allison. Yes. 
Motion passes six out. Thank you, Mrs. Frank. Um, then we need to, Mr. Pava, can you help us here? Um, with the related. Yeah, was, was that a flat 40? That, that last motion? I believe so, yes. Okay. Should it have been 40, I think it was 40,900. Oh, 911, that's the, that's the budgeted salary. I just wanted to know. So that the 4911 was the yeah. reduction? Yes, Mr. Conlon. Okay. So The related changes would be um, from two four four zero five two zero nine zero health insurance. Uh, I think that that's on a single plan. I'll confirm it before the next meeting, but it's better to be safe than sorry. So that's 12,500. I believe you're correct, Joe. Um, so that would be for that line item. I'm checking to see. Um, the line item 24405201 FICA would go from 73 to 70. So I'd be reduced $3,000. And I think everything else Will stay relatively the same. Okay. Sorry, Joe, did you cover pensions? Pensions will be allocated amongst all departments, so it'll just be a reallocation again. We were fixed on our 2021 MMO. Okay. So in total, there'd be no change. Um, okay. Uh, do you want to make a motion on the health insurance? Yeah, I picked this cross up, so. I'll carry it. Okay. Um, 2440, uh, make a motion on 2440-52090 to reduce that by 12,500. Second. There's a second. Uh, I don't think there's any discussion on that. Mrs. Frank, on the motion, please. Mr. Yo yes. Mr. Mackey. Yes. Mrs. Katz. I'm sorry, yes. Mr. Banks. Yes. Ms. Mealy. Yes. Mr. Allison. Yes. Motion passes 6 0. Thank you, Mrs. Frank. And then we have the FICA. Yes. So I'll make a motion on uh, line item. Two four four zero five two zero one zero to reduce that by it was three thousand correct Joe? Yes. To reduce that by three thousand. There's a motion. Second. There's a motion and a second. Um, Mrs. Frank, on the motion, please. Mr. Yoder. Yes. Mr. Mackey. Yes. Mrs. Katz. Yes. Mr. Bank. Yes. Ms. Mealy. Yes. Mr. Allen. Yes. Motion passed six though. Uh, thank you, Mr. Banks. I know that was a tough one. Okay. Um, Mr. Uh, Powell Black. Do you have a, a running total of where we're at 
concerning the bottom line, what we added or yeah, added to our I, uh, before reviewing every, the, the changes that I've wrote down, I think that I've caught them. I'm at So that'd be, if you're running a total, that would be 243. 502, yeah. Okay, 243, 502 so far tonight. Yeah. For those who are keeping score at home. Actually, no, because that will go down by fifty thousand dollars for the change that Mr. Mackey made on City Hall. Okay. I didn't throw that one in there yet because I have to allocate that across the group. So we're one ninety three. We're 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 one forty nine, five ninety four, and one ninety three five zero two. Correct. Okay. Um, anything else? Mr. Yoder. Uh, Councilman Banks had his hand up first, so I'll... Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't I'm see sorry. it. I, I caught it just as I raised my hand, so it's... Okay. Yeah. Well, I just want to make sure we don't forget. So we took that MS4 money out, but we have to reallocate it. So, Joe, did you get... Um, <coughs> apologies. Uh, did you get the items that we can put that towards? Yeah, I'll send it out here. Dave, I think we were looking at maybe reallocating that if, if we're potentially tabling the budget to look for even more cuts. Um, I think we were looking at reallocating that funding next week. Yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, we, got, we got a bit of time yet, but, and Joe, you gave me that documentation and I can't find it right now, I'm sorry. That's fine. Um, I, I'm working on sending the email right now. Great. Thanks, Joe. Um, so talk to me again. How much exactly is in the bottom line right now, Joe? About Since you're not working on anything else. 550. Um, and we had taken the tax rate down um, to a one and a half mil increase as of last week, correct? Uh, I believe so, yes. So 550 would potentially, if we ignored the need to leave anything in the bottom line, um, would leave us with room to um, reduce taxes by uh, about another half a mil this evening, correct? Uh, 400 and 434. Yeah. Right. Um, so that would leave us with 116 in the bottom line. Roughly Correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. Is everybody following me here? Um, so we're currently sitting with, with all these cuts, with all the cuts that none of us wanted to make. Um, and with all the, um, with all the ones that are really hard, the, the cuts, the cuts that involve staffing or potential staffing. Um, we're, we're still sitting at a one mil tax increase in a year when um, not only is the city not likely to have any money, but, but neither are the city's taxpayers. Uh, so I think the question moving forward is, um, while I am exceptionally pleased with the amount of, I uh, pleased would be the wrong term, um, while I think that we have made good progress and we have accomplished a lot toward the goal of lowering the burden on the city's taxpayers of this upcoming budget year, um, I would like to see us go further. Um, how do the other members of council feel about that? I would second that. I concur, yes. 
Okay. Um, I'm going to assume that all of us concur, even Vince, who's not here right now. <laughs> and, uh, um, I, having spoken to Vince, he definitely concurs, though. So. <laughs> right, exactly. Um, I don't think that, I, I, I believe that all of us would like to see the tax rate um, stay as close to its current, uh, its current level as it is moving forward. Um, that said, um, I think that I am looking uh, personally to, uh, to table the budget um, and, and revisit it next week when we have already scheduled a special meeting uh, related to a, a second vote on another ordinance um, and, uh, and, and, and look at the budget yet again next week. Um, I will make that motion to table, um, but before I do, uh, I'd like to um, I'd like to talk about, I'd like to revisit a couple of the topics that we've discussed already this evening and, and add a couple of new ones in. Um, the budget that I feel comfortable voting on for uh, the 2021 budget year includes a half a mil tax increase. And we're currently at one mil. That means that we need to trim another $434,000 in spending out of this budget or find another $434 in revenue for ourselves next year. Um, we've discussed a, a couple of ways in which that might happen already. We've discussed naming rights. Um, uh, we, we did, inc we are, we will be next week increasing um, the, the, our, our TV cable franchise fee um, to bring in a little bit more revenue for the city. Um, but uh, but we, we need to find more. And um, at this point, those of us on city council have over the last several weeks um, found uh, Help me out here, Joe. Um, a little bit better, better than a million dollars in cuts from the 2021 budget. We have reduced the tax rate by one and a quarter mills. We have reduced the proposed tax increase by one and a quarter mills. Um, but we need to get it further. Uh, we have discussed a handful of things um, that the administration could consider reducing. Um, $70,000 for Bowman Field, as well as um, potentially money that we'd set aside for Bowman Field in prior years. Um, we, uh, excuse me here, uh, remind me of the other, the, the um, Bureau of Law expenses. Um, we, we had discussed the administration and the administration will be in the coming week uh, looking into the idea of, of borrowing um, for the city given the current uh, interest rates um, to finance a handful of things that, uh, that are pressing and, and that might save us in this upcoming budget year. Um, but uh, but we, need to, we need to look further and I, I challenge the administration to find this $434,000 between this week and next. I, I know it's not an easy challenge, um, but, uh, but, but, um, but we, we spent hours on this and, and we will need to spend more to make this happen. Um, there are a handful of other suggestions I have uh, for either revenue or cuts. Um, and so I'll put them out there on the table as well. Um, uh, we, we stated negotiating with the Bureau of Law. We stated looking at borrowing um, as a mechanism for both fixing the pool, um, making going paperless a reality and meeting our obligations at the field in this coming year. Um, we, um, we had discussed in our past meeting, but not this meeting, the possibility of cutting the position, the position of an assistant controller to realize some savings for the city. Um, we have also discussed outsourcing uh, the, uh, the IT department. Um, we've discussed potentially outsourcing rec the recreation department. Um, and we can still look as well at outsourcing the engineering department, all of which could potentially realize some level of savings for the city. None of these are things that, that I would be happy to do necessarily. And none of these are things that I necessarily think is a good idea, but all of these are potential avenues for reducing spending within the city. Um, and I would challenge the administration to look at all of them and, and consider them over the next week to figure out where we can get the remaining, the remaining funds from. Um, but the largest, what I see as potential source of, um, of revenue for the city not revenue, excuse me, that's the wrong term, um, but, but of uh, sort of additional um, balancing for the city uh, is our relationship and our ongoing um, 
uh, subsidy of River Valley Transit. Um, we had discussed last meeting very specifically uh, the staffing that, that um, the city receives $75,000 from RVT annually um, for services provided by the city to RVT. Um, and, and we discussed that there's been a lot of back and forth this year. The city has sent staff to RVT, RVT has sent staff to the city. Um, we know that moving forward, we, we will be looking at, looking at those hours much more closely. Um, but, but I don't expect that we'll see much more than, than a $75,000 difference in that category. But, but the city provides other things to RVT as well. Um, the city provides uh, trash services to RVT. Um, as we discussed a, a couple of weeks ago, um, you know, a good chunk of the city's trash contract annually is, um, is elements of, of pickup required by RVT. Uh, I believe that RVT has now been invoiced for those elements, but they had not previously paid for them. But we need to find more areas like that. Um, in our pension plans, we, we, we manage RVT's pension plan, we manage RVT's health care. Um, we, we provide a, a fair amount of HR to RVT. Um, the buses drive on city streets and yet do not provide anything for, um, for, for damage to those streets or, or depreciation to those streets. Um, RBT owns, I would guess conservatively upwards of $20 million worth of um, land and improvements in, in the city, um, but pays no rent, no pilot to the city of Williamsport. Um, I, I uh, you know, I'm, I'm not certain that the city, the city annually pays um, a pretty uh, hefty chunk of our budget goes to meeting our past pension obligations. And I don't know what RBT's relationship to the city is there either. Uh, th the point is that I don't know because I've not been delving into um, the relationship between the city and RBT for the past year. But many people who work for the city and who work for RBT have been delving into exactly that for the past year. And I would suggest that we can find opportunities, um, we can, that we can find places in which the city has been subsidizing RBT for years. And I would suggest we try to figure out a way that we can balance that this coming year and, and, and realize additional income for the city. Um, the, the obviously transit, um, we, we love and respect our transit arm, but, but we, uh, you know, we, we have a more nuanced, we, we, we have a better accounting relationship with community development than we do with transit, with transit currently. And we need to figure that out. We need, we need to keep accounts. And it seems to me that the accounts are probably mostly in the city's favor. Um, so that is another area that I think we can look to. Um, but the upshot of it is we, we, we need to find more cuts. And um, I don't feel as though I have, while, while I am, um, while it has been uh, exceptionally generous of certain members, certain department heads to step up and say, look, um, we can sacrifice this in my department. We can sacrifice that in my department. Believe me, everybody um, is doing their best. We, we haven't heard a lot from the top down administratively um, about uh, ways that we can cut and ways that we can tighten our belt or ways that we can find income. And, and that needs to happen between this week and next week. Uh, so we got another $434,000 to go. Um, anybody else on council have any other areas in which we think the administration could look to economize or recognize additional revenue? Mr. Yoder. Uh, Liz, I would agree. And um, I'm, I appreciate all the sentiments and, and ideas um, that um, you, you've backed up that we've discussed over the past couple of weeks. Thank you. Um, the only other thing that kind of came to mind over the last week, just kind of diving into everything this may not be feasible. We, this may be an easy answer. I don't know, but um, our CDBG money, um, you know, I, I know that that's allocated for various economic development things. Um, there are a number of things in the general fund that are economic development focused. Our, um, our lobbyists um, look at our codes office. Um, are there ways where we can leverage some of that money um, to offset or even enhance um, the, the needs of, of the general fund in those areas. Um, you know, may, that may be a creative way this year that we could um, try to ease the burden on the taxpayer. I mean, um, and even look at that $600,000 loan program. I, I, I love the idea. Um, it, it so far early on seems to be 
very cumbersome for small businesses to use. So if that's something that um, we can't fix and get to more businesses, um, is that something that could be leveraged in another way? Um, you know, whether it's a business or whether it's a, a taxpayer, um, how do we get that money um, to ease the burden? So that's another thought um, that I don't know the answer to, but maybe the administration, if they don't know the answer to, could look at for the next week as well. Mrs. Katz. Um, I'm going to try and go back in time, and I don't know whether you, Randy, or our Joe Pavlock, we crossed this bridge many years ago, and if I remember, Bill Hall was president of council, and we did have a huge tax increase, and what we did at that point, if I remember correctly, I wasn't on council. I was sitting in the benches watching and trying to absorb and listen. Uh, I think didn't an MMU was taken out to cover the cost of the tax increase. Um, Joe, do you, Joe Pavlov, do you remember this? Uh, uh, what was taken out, Bonnie? We took out a, a loan to cover the tax increase and we're able to pay it back, but it was a three year loan. So we didn't have to, you know, put the burden on the taxpayers. And no, if I, 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 I don't recall that. I know that um, prior to me starting with the city, I think back in 2004, when the market crashed and the, the pensions went crazy, um, there was a, a, a 10 year note to cover that. Um, I think it's very restrictive that you, what you would be able to use that for. And I'd have to, to, to look up some information, but typically you can't borrow to um, offset your operating costs, your year to year costs. You can only do it for things that are um, long-term in nature. But yeah, it, I, I do remember that. And we were on that pension um, note, we were paying it back quicker than the 10 year period. So that is what I think, I believe what you're remembering. Yeah, it was, you know, it's, it's kind of fuzzy, not sitting on council at that point. Uh, I, I don't remember, but I remember we were trying to cover costs instead of doing a tax increase. I don't remember that one, um, but I do remember borrowing for operating costs and it was our annual pension obligation. And that was a 10 year and, and we paid that in advance of the 10 years. Um, Joe, I, I remember that, something, I remember something for like three years. I'll have to look back into that. I'll have to check on that one. Yeah, I don't recall that either, Bonnie, but. Um, you um, know, we're, we're doing so many cuts and trying to come up with so many other things. You know, you, every night you go through the budget, you go through page after page and it's, you know, it's heartbreaking at times. It really is because, you know, we, we are getting down to the bare bones um, and, you know, you don't want to cut it to a point where, you know, we're, we're really neglecting our services to the city. But on the other hand, what can we afford at this point? You know, I'm one of the things I'm looking at is um, going through again, let's go to the Bureau of Fire on page 43. Um, their fire, um, their training process on um, line item 2420-79530. Um, that's $30,000. Um, is that training in-house? Is that training out, out of house? Is that, can we cut back on that? You know, I think we're all looking at different areas to, to cut back on for next year from the standpoint of trying to keep, um, trying to keep us going, but yet on a, on a, on a strict budget. And Chief Killing, can you answer me on that one? Yes, ma'am, I'd be happy to. Um, our training budget was cut by a third this year um, due to many classes being canceled. Uh, those trainings are certification classes that are You're vitally necessary. Breaking up, can't hear you. Is that better? I think you're good. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You're, you're good, Chief. Okay. So uh, that training line item is maintaining yes. what we had uh, last year with giving uh, approximately $10,000 of that back in 2020. Uh, there's, uh, because of the use of our department, there's a multitude of classes that we need to 
uh, certifications that we need to have for our newer firefighters. And so uh, most of our, we do a tremendous amount of training in house, but there are certifications that are required of us uh, to maintain services such as uh, water rescue um, would be one that I can just uh, off the top of my head, certifications for our personnel when they uh, transition to driving fire apparatus. Um, and all those are, are pretty critical. Uh, and again, with losing, you know, a third of that budget in 2020, it's uh, pretty imperative that we maintain um, that. And that, that budget, I mean, that line item is budgeted down to the dollar to, to get in the courses that we need to get in for 2020, or excuse me, for 2021. I think, you know, like I said, we're questioning everything. And I, I don't know about other council members, but I'm getting blurry eyed trying to go through every page and see what we can do. And uh, I, you know, I agree with Liz, we do have to table this. We do have to come up with um, more money because I don't want to see a tax increase at all for anybody. Too many people are hurting already and we haven't even gotten into 2021. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's, a very, it's a very difficult discussion to have. Um, I, and I know I've said it before and we've all talked about where the money's at in the budget. Um, and I, I, I see what we're doing. We're, we're all working hard, administration and council to make changes and cuts where we can. Um, but a lot of these are one-time savings, um, you know, a certain amount of them. Um, the ones that are salaries, those are year over year, which really speaks to the point, uh, the 75, 80% is, is tied up in salaries benefits and the, um, the associated costs there. Um, if, at some point, we're saving, we're scrimping, we can get leaner to a point, but some, you reach a point where you're beginning to cannibalize your structure. Uh, that's true in any industry or Government and governmental entity, um, and and so the the positive side of that is, and I, I think we're going to do this, and we need to make it a, a big priority next year. Is focusing on how to increase revenue and income, as as Mr. Yoder was referencing earlier with the CDBG. We have to do that across the board. Um, we have to uh, ramp up grant writing um, in-house. We, we have to find a way to do that. Um, there's a myriad of things we can talk about and plan for, but I, I think a, a cooperative effort with um, the administration and council should produce, uh, 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 produce uh, positive effects on the funding stream. And, that's really the long-term solution. Um, if we don't do that, we're eventually going to, to be cutting very deep in personnel. There, there's no other way around it. Um, so uh, we, we have our work cut out for us during this coming week. Uh, but then I really think we need to focus as well, keep things tight next year, but be looking uh, in, the, in the direction where we're gonna be able to increase our funds. Um, that's just my two cents, but it all works together. Mr. Yoder. I, I would agree with that as well. I believe um, Councilwoman Mealy made a motion to table. I would second that motion. There's a motion and a second to table. Um, Mrs. Frank on the motion. Mr. Yoder. Yes. Mr. Mackey. Yes. Mrs. Katz. Yes. Mr. Bay. Yes. Ms. Me. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mr. Allison. Yes. 
Item five is tabled. Um, then we have item six. Would you read that in short form, Mrs. Frank, please? An ordinance of the city of Williamsport, County of Lycoming and the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania fixing the tax rate for all city purposes for the year 2021 in final reading. Okay, uh, we're gonna need a motion to table that as well. Move. So move. Second. There's a motion and second. Mrs. Frank on the motion. Mr. Yoder. Uh, just to clarify, this is voting to table, correct? Yeah. Yes. Mr. Mackey. Yes. Mrs. Katz. Yes. Mr. Banks. Yes. Ms. Mealy. Yes. Mr. Alice. Yes. Six zero. Motion is tabled. Thank you, Mrs. Frank. Excuse me a moment. I lost my agenda. Uh, item seven is except for filing. Uh, we don't have anything to file. All right, we don't have any uh, minutes to file tonight. Um, announcements, next regularly scheduled city council meeting would, will be on um, Thursday, January 7th at 7 p.m. Uh, it will be remote. Uh, that will be in 2021. Uh, there will be a special city council meeting uh, December 17th, next Thursday at 6.30. Uh, upcoming meetings, um, we have a finance committee meeting, um, December, uh, that's next Tuesday, what is that, Mrs. Frank? The 15th. The 15th, um, at one o'clock, and that will be remote, and those are all the meetings we have for the rest of the year. Um, are there any comments from council tonight? Mr. Mackey. Uh, yeah, just, this is just a more so of an announcement. The uh, Williamsport Business Association is um, hosting a uh, late night shoppers event tomorrow uh, from five to eight. There will be a, a strolling acapella group who will be masked and singing Christmas carols up and down 4th Street. Um, I, I think we're all aware of the, the new restrictions that are going to be taking effect um, technically Saturday morning at 12.01. So, you know, I, I would encourage uh, as many of you that are able to, to come downtown tomorrow and safely uh, support all of our local businesses downtown. You still have an opportunity to, uh, I guess, go out to eat one more time. Uh, for a couple more until the till next year, I suppose. And again, you know, I would just ask that you do it safely, follow your social distancing, wear your masks, but um, all of our local stores downtown and restaurants um, need our support. So uh, I'll, I'll be down there as part of the Williamsport Business Association. Um, and uh, I'd hope to see anybody that can make it down there as well. Thank you, Mr. Mackey. Other comments from council? Comments from the administration. Uh, yes, Mr. Allison, just yeah. one. Yes. Um, this is Joe Girardi. Uh, we are going to have a meeting um, by um, Zoom um, on Wednesday for the Blighted Property Review Committee. As long as um, our attorney agrees with it and we're set up to do it, we'll have that meeting. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Girardi. Um, I just wanted to say that I'm really looking forward to us all being in the same room again soon. Thank you. I think uh, you get 100% second on that, Chief Hagan. Chief Hagan, if you can still say that after everything we cut out of your budget tonight, then you are a, you are a fine man, sir. A fine man. Thank you. I think, I think he said that so he can reach out and grab us. <laughs> I was worried about that. That's why I figured I'd chime in. <laughs> 
Well, he did serve me with a subpoena today, so I don't know what that counts for. <laughs> That's another another item. Preemptive, Randy. Don't put that in the headlines. Some of that. It's a joke. Um, okay. Uh, anything from the public tonight, Mr. White? No, uh, no requests from the public, Mr. Okay. Nelson. No comments from the public then. Uh, I'll entertain a motion for adjournment. So moved. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 